Hello guys, Croft is here. The 1979 film Alien is arguably the greatest science fiction movie ever made and I've re-watched it countless times over the years. The movie begins with the commercial space tug Nostromo loaded with mineral ores and bound for Earth. Nostromo's crew is in cryostasis asleep just like the ship that looks empty and quiet in an eerie way. But then the silence is interrupted when the ship's central computer named Mother detects an unknown transmission activating emergency protocols and awakening the crew from cryosleep. The crew consists of seven members, Captain Dallas, Executive Officer Kane, Warrant Officer Ellen Ripley, Navigator Lambert, Science Officer Ash, and Engineers Parker and Brett. As the crew gathers for breakfast, Captain Dallas retreats to the computer room to communicate with Mother, an advanced operating system. Although the audience doesn't witness the content of the Mother's message, Dallas subsequently informs the crew that the ship has intercepted an unidentified distress signal of unknown origin. Company's policy mandates that they investigate its source and failure to comply would mean relinquishing of the crew's shares, thus negating any profit they might have made from their mining expedition. Shortly after, the ship approaches the moon LV-426 in the Zeta-2 reticuli system. After a visually stunning landing sequence, Nostromo descends on the surface of this mysterious moon. However, due to a rough landing, there is a breach in the ship that will require at least 17 hours to repair. While the engineers remain on board to handle repairs, Dallas, Kane, and Lambert set out to investigate the origin of the mysterious transmission. As they traverse the dark, windswept terrain, they discover that the signal originates from an abandoned alien aircraft. Upon entering it, they lose communication with Nostromo. Inside, they find themselves in a strange and unusual corridor, the walls of which seem to be constructed out of the mix of enormous bones, metal, and other organic material. Kane ascends a set of stairs and discovers a large platform. At its center is a bizarre fossilized figure, a giant pilot merged with a strange mix of a chair and a launch platform. This enigmatic fossilized entity would later be dubbed the Space Jockey. Notably, the Space Jockey bears a gaping hole in its chest, a seemingly minor detail that becomes significantly important as the movie unfolds. Back on the Nostromo, Ripley deciphers a portion of the transmission and recognizes it as a warning signal. However, she's unable to tell this revelation to the team that entered the alien vessel as the communication with them seems to be lost due to a windstorm. Meanwhile, Kane discovers a breach in the platform near the space jockey. He eagerly ventures down and stumbles upon a cavern covered in a blue mist and filled with hundreds of large egg-shaped entities, the alien eggs. Despite the sense of looming danger, Kane's curiosity overpowers his fear. As he touches one of the alien eggs, a bizarre creature springs forth, breaking through his helmet and latches onto his face. Dallas and Lambert rush an unconscious Kane back to the Nostromo. However, Ripley, acting as the senior officer, denies them entry, citing quarantine protocols. Dallas fiercely argues and Ash, with seemingly ulterior motives, overrides her decision and allows them inside, suggesting that he and Dallas might know something others do not. Upon removing Kane's helmet, they find a terrifying creature, the alien facehugger, attached to his face. In an attempt to remove it using a laser, they inadvertently release its acidic blood, which burns through three levels of the ship. So the decision is made to leave the facehugger in place, fearing that its removal might kill Kane. While the rest of the crew works on the ship repairs, Ash studies Kane and the creature using X-ray and other instruments. A display on the screen briefly reveals something reminiscent of an embryo, but Ash quickly turns it off when confronted by Ripley about his breach of quarantine and disregard for the chain of command. However, Ash weasels away from giving any concrete answers and his behavior becomes more and more odd. Shortly after, the facehugger is found lifeless on the floor. Despite Ripley's objections, Ash decides to preserve it for research, disregarding an unusual hostility of the creature. 
With the ship now partially repaired, the crew resumes their journey to Earth. Unexpectedly, Kane awakens, displaying some memory loss but otherwise appears normal although with an unusually heightened appetite. During a final crew meal before entering stasis, Kane begins to choke and convulse violently. During his seizures, a small alien creature erupts from Kane's chest, instantly ending his life. The creature swiftly flees into the depths of the ship, leaving the entire crew paralyzed in horror. As the alien emerged from Kane, Ash notably discouraged the crew from harming it, hinting at his peculiar behavior and suggesting that he might be operating under a concealed directive. After releasing Kane's dead body into space via an airlock, the crew sets out to track down and capture the creature. Equipped with tracking devices, nets, electric prods and flamethrowers, they search around the ship. Ripley, Brett and Barker track a moving signal only to find it's the ship's cat, Jones. Brett, failing to catch the cat, overlooks the likelihood that the tracker could mistakenly pick up the cat's movements again in the future. Thus, Parker instructs Brett to find and capture the cat. Venturing into a landing leg compartment in pursuit of Jones, Brett stumbles upon a shed skin, likely a remnant of the creature's growth phase. Moments later, a now fully grown alien, the Xenomorph, ambushes Brett, taking him away. In the aftermath, the crew discusses their plan to get rid of the monster and theorizes that the alien might be traversing the ship in the air shafts. They then use flamethrowers in an effort to drive the creature into an airlock. The captain of the ship, Dallas, ventures into the ducts with an aim of cornering the Xenomorph and driving it into an airlock. As he navigates the labyrinths of passages, he struggles to locate the creature that doesn't seem to be visible on a movement tracker. However, in an abrupt turn, the Xenomorph ambushes Dallas, seemingly taking his life. Recognizing the alien's intent to methodically eliminate the crew, Lambert in panic proposes they abandon the Nostromo and flee in the shuttle. Ripley, however, points out that the shuttle won't sustain four people. She remains committed to Dallas's initial plan of ejecting the alien into space. With Dallas presumably dead, the leadership falls to Ripley, who now has access to the ship's computer. Upon interfacing with the mother, she uncovers a terrifying secret protocol, Special Order 937. It turns out that the company secretly instructed Ash to secure the alien and return it to Earth, deeming the crew expendable. Caught off guard while interfacing with Mother, Ripley suddenly finds Ash looming over her. She confronts Ash about his covert objectives and their dispute quickly turns into a physical fight. Displaying alarming strength, Ash nearly suffocates Ripley but Parker intervenes just in time. Striking Ash, Parker reveals the shocking truth, Ash is an android. Together, Parker, Ripley and Lambert barely overpower him. Once incapacitated, they reactivate his head to gain insights into the Xenomorph and potential means of its destruction. Ash cryptically conveys that his primary objective was to ensure the Xenomorph's preservation, describing it as the perfect organism and suggesting that the crew stands absolutely no chance against it. Ash admires the creature's pure, instinct-driven nature, free from constraints of morality or conscience, and he jokes about having sympathies for the crew. Then Ripley swiftly cuts his power and they set the android into flames, ultimately killing it. Committed to a new plan, Ripley, Lambert and Parker decide to activate the Nostromo's self-destruct mechanism and escape via the shuttle. As Ripley heads to the shuttle to prepare it for the launch, Parker and Lambert gather life support essentials. In the shuttle, Ripley spots Jones, the cat, on a tracker screen and begins a search through the ship to retrieve him. While collecting what appears to be oxygen tanks, Parker and Lambert realize that the Xenomorph is standing right behind them. Frozen in terror, Lambert watches as the creature overpowers Parker. The alien then seemingly turns its lethal attention to her. Their agonized screams pierce through the radio, compelling Ripley to rush to their aid. 
However, upon arrival, she is confronted with the grim scene of Parker and Lambert's dead bodies. Overwhelmed by fear, but yet driven by determination, Ripley activates the ship's emergency destruction system, setting it on a 10 minute countdown. Carrying Jones with her, she carefully navigates the ship's corridors towards the escape shuttle. However, her path is abruptly halted by the terrifying figure of the xenomorph, blocking her way to the shuttle. In desperation and panic, she goes back in an attempt to stop the self-destruct sequence. Tragically, she misses the window to do so and the countdown now looms ominously, just 5 minutes until the ship's detonation. With no other option, Ripley cautiously navigates the ship's corridors with a flamethrower in hand. She retrieves Jones and manages to reach the shuttle, surprisingly without encountering the alien. Ripley narrowly escapes the Nostromo's colossal explosion and momentarily believes that she's finally left the horrors behind her. While preparing for cryostasis, she jumps in terror as the xenomorph appears to be on board, seamlessly hidden between pipes and communication equipment due to its biomechanical design. Filled with horror, Ripley puts on a spacesuit and uses gas to move the creature from its hiding spot. As the xenomorph approaches her, Ripley quickly opens an airlock door. The resulting vacuum nearly propels the creature into the void, but the resilient xenomorph clings tenaciously to the frame. In the last ditch effort, Ripley fires a grappling hook, but the gun jams in the closing airlock door, binding the alien to the shuttle. It attempts to get into an engine exhaust, but Ripley ignites the engines, finally blasting the xenomorph away into deep space. After recording the log entry, Ripley places Jones and herself into stasis for the trip back to Earth. Thank you guys for watching, I'll also make a longer, more in-depth breakdown of this movie, discussing hidden details, deleted scenes and other elements, so stay tuned for that. Also, like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more alien content. My name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.